What I'll be reviewing today is enabling the next generation system on package. Uh, the agenda for today's talk includes a introduction to system on package. Uh, what are the motivators and challenges facing system on package architectures? Uh, then I'll do a deep dive review in three of the most common types of system on package interfaces. And then I'll try to wrap things up with my predictions on uh, what uh, system on packages will look like uh, today and moving into the future. Uh, an introduction to myself, uh, I'll try to be brief. Uh, I've been doing IP for over 20 years uh, and am super excited about how interface IP uh, is being used to quickly deploy a whole new uh, form of integration, not within the SOC uh, only, but also moving to integration within the package. Uh, what's driving uh, system on package architectures? Uh, and to get to the root of it, uh, uh, we need to understand what's happening to development costs and what's happening to manufacturing costs. So what you see in this plot on the left from IBS is that from 65 nanometer to 5 nanometer, uh, large, uh, large die costs have gone from tens of millions uh, to hundreds of millions, an increase of over 20 times uh, for a SOC development. And what you can see is uh, on the right is that for a fixed 300 millimeter wafer, uh, it, you can only manufacture a certain number of 2020 die. So any catastrophic defect on that wafer uh, is going to have a material impact to the resulting yield on the die from that wafer. Uh, what you see on the right is what uh, it would look like if you take any one of these die and split it into four smaller 10 by 10 uh, chiplets. And the analysis shows that building a uh, smaller but uh, higher quantity of dye yields approximately 30% uh, more usable dye than a single 20 by 20. So economics are driving us to move away from large uh, chips that are costly to design and verify uh, and have poorer yield to smaller chips that are uh, cheaper to develop and have improved yield. So uh, what, are, what is driving us? What are the benefits and the challenges of moving to a form of disintegration within the chip? So uh, as I've covered in the last slide, uh, you, you get an improvement in economics in terms of improved yield and lower R&D costs. Uh, there's also nothing saying that all the chips that go into the package have to be manufactured on the same node. So you, you can reuse IP from older nodes and you can uh, reuse chiplets from older nodes uh, to build new products. That reduces IP porting costs uh, and uh, accelerates time to market. On, uh, in terms of challenges introduced by disintegration, uh, we're taking what has traditionally been nanometer wires and na uh, driven by nanometer buffers and replacing them with lar uh, much larger interconnects that need to be driven. Uh, so these larger package level interconnects introduce signal integrity challenges, uh, increases latency to get signals on and off chips, uh, increases power area and obviously test complexity because now there's multiple die that need to get tested uh, without access points to the external world on those interfaces. So before we dive into specific uh, system on package interfaces, uh, I'll do a quick review of three key packaging technologies that are being used today to develop system on packages. Uh, the first is silicon interposers, which are pieces of silicon that go in the package and connect chiplets or die 
to the package organic substrate. And the reason we're, uh, we're introducing interposers is interposers have much finer pitches on the order of like what you would find on the SOC compared to uh, traditional package uh, lithography, which uh, has millimeter level pitches. So we're able to get much finer pitches to escape signals and to connect signals from one chiplet to another. Uh, through silicon vias is a technology that allows signals to pass through silicon. So uh, uh, you can see we use TSVs in interposers, but uh, they're also being used today to stack chip in a third dimension. So we not only can tile die within a package in two dimensions, but now we can increase density uh, within the system on package by stacking die on top of each other. And TSVs allow power and signals to connect through each of these stack dies. Uh, the third technology, which is wafer level packaging, uh, eliminates the need of interposers and introduces SOC-like pitches uh, directly onto the organic substrate. So now you're able to get to pitches on the order of 35 to 40 micron IO density uh, directly onto the organic substrate. So now moving into types of interfaces uh, that are used for uh, die to die links. Uh, the first one I'll review is bunch of wires, uh, which is driven by an industry consortium uh, called the ODSA. Uh, it is a DDR-like type of interface, uh, which has a forwarded clock uh, and single-ended data signals that are built into channels. Uh, some of its benefits are that it's low latency, uh, and because of its single-ended signaling scheme, uh, it's also a lower power uh, form of die-to-die -die interface. Uh, one of the drawbacks is that if you need a lot of bandwidth across chiplets, uh, you need quite a bit of uh, routing resource. And because of the uh, signal integrity challenges of the single-ended signaling, uh, typically a bunch of wires also requires uh, silicon interposers, uh, which does increase uh, integration cost for, for the system on package. Uh, it uses a clocking scheme like DDR, so uh, a double-edged clocking scheme. A uh, bunch of wires in unterminated mode can uh, operate as high as 5 to 8 gigabit per second per wire uh, with a clock running at half the rate. Uh, there's a second configuration for a bunch of wires where clocks can be uh, and data lines can be terminated and uh, that allows operation up to 16 gigabit per second using an 8 gigahertz clock. And uh, what you see is for a single channel, uh, which can have up to 160 bits, it's segmented into 16-bit uh, bytes. Uh, and within a byte, uh, each byte has its own uh, set of differential clock signals that are routed uh, similarly to the associated 16 data signals. And so a channel consists of up to uh, 10 bytes, uh, of where each byte consists of uh, 16 data bits. And so, uh, as you see in this example, uh, channels can also be tiled. So if, you, so if higher I.O. density is required, uh, multiple channels can be instantiated to create uh, terabit, uh, terabit per second interfaces. Uh, the next type of interface I'll review is uh, an evolution uh, of a memory interface called HBM. Uh, this takes advantaging of TSVs and interposers as well. Uh, like bunch of wires, it is a uh, single-ended type of clock forwarded uh, signaling scheme. Uh, HBM has been used for years in 
uh, memory interfaces interfacing to DRAMs uh, for very high bandwidths. Uh, like bunch of wires, HBM also includes of channels where channels are built up of smaller data bytes. Uh, however, HBM or uh, its, uh, its equivalent uh, standard called AIB uh, can uh, consist up to uh, 24 data channels uh, with a, any single channel like a uh, bunch of wires can consist of up to 160 IOs uh, using a 40 micron bump pitch. Uh, HBM is built for high speed, uh, so it is terminated. It can run up to uh, 6.4 gigatransfers per second per channel. Uh, AIB uh, can run up to 4 gigatransfer per second. Uh, both of these uh, standards are low, uh, low latency. Uh, low power under a picojoule per bit, uh, where HBM is governed by JEDEC, uh, AIB is now uh, being driven by DARPA. Uh, th this next standard is uh, not based on a single-ended uh, memory-like signaling, uh, but rather it's, it's built on a high-speed serial signaling. Uh, there are two standards uh, that have been defined for this, XSR, uh, which is uh, driven by IEEE, as well as OIF, and USR, which is also driven by an uh, industry standard body. Uh, both of these signaling schemes are, are built on high-speed CERTUS interfaces, uh, operating up to 112 gigabits per second. Uh, these interfaces are used in uh, applications such as CXL, uh, CCIX, as well as PCIe to create uh, low latency, very high bandwidth protocols. Uh, unlike the parallel signaling methods uh, I have shown in the previous slides, uh, these schemes, uh, because of their signal integrity and equalization capability, don't require interposers, but can operate directly off of organic substrates. And the reason being any single line uh, can run up to 25 times faster uh, what a single HBM or bunch of wires line can operate at. And so organic substrate geometries are able to still deliver uh, terabits per second of IO operation with these high-speed serial links. Uh, the FIs used for XSR and USR are more sophisticated than HBM. Uh, and bunch of wires. There are analog equalizers, uh, sometimes analog DFEs, uh, transmit equalizers, transmit D to A's, and rather than having clocks forwarded, uh, clocks are typically extracted from the data signals themselves to recover and deserialize the data. Like the, their parallel brothers, uh, these links can be built below uh, one picojoule per bit, uh, and uh, can tolerate losses within the package of up to 10 dB. What you see here in this slide uh, is that uh, this red curve shows the raw uh, error rate for a PAM4 signal uh, for different EBNO. An EBNO is a form of signal to noise ratio. And so to run at 1e to the minus 6 operation at PAM4, uh, we would need an EVNO of approximately 15 dB, uh, which would result in a slicer SNR of about 21 dB. And this blue curve shows uh, that for an equivalent NRZ signal with an equivalent SNR, uh, the raw error rate would be 1e to the minus 15. Well, uh, for typical die-to-die, -die, the raw error rate of a PAM4 signal at these low losses is on the order of 1e to the minus 10. And these black and red curves show what an Ethernet-like forward error correction can do. And so at uh, 1e to the minus 10 SNRs, uh, Ethernet-like error correction would create resulting bit error rates uh, greater than or below 1e to the minus 20, which is overkill. So what's happening in system on package architectures is low power, low latency custom 
Reed Solomon facts are being built that can take 1e to the minus 10 error rates and improve them to 1e to the minus 15 while incurring one to two clock cycles of latency. So low latency forward error correction enables uh, 1e to the 15 error rate within an organic substrate. What you see here is a measured eye uh, from a uh, system on package, XSR Certus, and the measured on die error rate of about 1e to the minus 11 for this XSR interface. So which D to D interface will win moving forward? Uh, like any engi typical engineering endeavor, there, t uh, there is no one winner. Uh, I believe that uh, each interface uh, that I have covered will be used for a different type of application. Uh, I believe moving forward, bunch of wires works well for homogeneous compute where uh, you take a GPU, which is built up of multiple cores and uh, splice them into smaller chiplets to improve yield. Uh, using a bunch of wires type of interface to interconnect these homogeneous computing die uh, is a simple, very low latency interface uh, and uh, ports well to leading edge technologies. HBM is established as a memory interface uh, and organic substrates are uh, being used today. Uh, so HBM, I uh, for C will continue to be used as a efficient way to interface the DRAMs. And for high-speed serial I.O., uh, I, I see a industry standard interface like XSR or USR being well suited to mix and match uh, suppliers of I.O. die in order to take high bandwidth interfaces off of the package. And where do we go next as an industry for system on package? Uh, integrating RF capability, which currently is a uh, external module, and bringing that to within a system on package, uh, as well as uh, integrating power management ICs. So integration is not slowing down. Uh, what system on package has enabled is another dimension for us as an industry to integrate. We no longer have to exclusively focus on integrating within the IC. We can now integrate both within the IC as well as the package. And what are we doing at AlphaWave uh, to enable uh, this next generation system on package? Uh, being the world's third largest provider of physical interface IP, we not only provide the high performance, long reach IO to take signals off of the package and to drive real world, real world interconnects within uh, the data center uh, for both Ethernet as well as PCI Express and other standards. Uh, but we also ha uh, have enabled an XSR service that can generate uh, 112 gigabit per second data traffic below a picojoule per bit and drive terabits of information within a package uh, at a very low latency uh, and consuming a small amount of silicon. So we are here to enable the next generation of IC as well as the next generation system on package. And with that, uh, I'm here to take your questions. Thank you very much.